we have a special performance coming up today. Uh, you might know him. If you go to the Godfrey by Not Gilbert comedy shows, he uh, performs there. It's uh, Matt Kirshen, who will be doing a set for us. And he, you can also find out more about him. Uh, he has a podcast called Probably Science. So everybody, please welcome the hilarious Matt Kirshen. So much. This is a this is a treat. Um, of uh, English, by the way, and uh, this is this is this is kind of embarrass. Uh, this is a bit awkward. I uh, yesterday just accepted the Lord Jesus into my life <laughs> as my Lord and Savior, and you're all burning in hell. But. I also noticed there's a no camera zone at the back of the room uh, for people who uh, don't want to be included in the broadcast. Uh, but I now know, as of yesterday, that you people don't show up on film. <laughs> so that sign's redundant. Uh, but still, it's nice to be here and uh, slow. It's, it's cool that you've got this thing going as well. Like, you've sort of. It's a secular church. I, I get it. I like it. It's sort of has the, like, doesn't have the God thing, but still has the church, like, aspects of communal singing and reluctant children. <laughs> and it's, it's lovely. Um, uh, Gina asked me to do this, and she told me that the theme was making every moment count. And I thought about that, and uh, I realized that's a horrible idea. <laughs> that's the worst. Every... I spend my life cringing because every moment in it counts far too much. <laughs> the reason I do this job is because I make every moment count. I dwell on every moment. I take every moment far too seriously. It's the reason I can't have a conversation with anyone without remembering something in my past and going, ah, like that. Uh, it's the reason I'm stood in front of you right now early on a Sunday afternoon with a raging hangover. <laughs> when, I, when I was a kid, I had a toy, and, and you might have had it as well, and it, it's like a rubber suction cup, and you turn it inside out, and we place it on a tabletop, and when it unfolds, it pops up in the air. And before PlayStations, that was pretty exciting. <laughs> but there was another thing it could do, because it worked like a rubber suction cup, you could stick it to your skin. And I stuck it to my forehead, and I made a really tight vacuum, too tight as it turns out. What happens if you do that is it bursts all the capillaries in your forehead in a perfect circle, leaving you with a bright red ring in the middle of your face, and that ring will remain for three school days. And I, I, wish, I wish I was the kind of guy who could own his own embarrassment. I wish I was, you know the kind of guy who can own his farts in a crowded room. You know, that kind of buzz, like, oh, it's going to hit you in a minute. You know, that kind of... I think that's why I like Americans. Because I think you collectively own your fart. That's the national mentality. You know, so sometimes you go too far and become the kind of guy who pins you down and does it on your head, and that's bad, but... I respect that. I wish I was that kind of person. I wish I was the kind of kid who could just burst into school the next day, like, look what I just did, I'm such a dick. You know, uh, what I did instead was claim that I tripped up and hit my head on a perfectly circular door handle. <laughs> that was 23 years ago, and I still think about it enough to tell a room full of strangers in a hope that it's in some way cathartic. <laughs> and it isn't. <laughs> it isn't. Every moment of my life, the time when I was about 18 and I thought I was being sophisticated by finding a CD of Beethoven and sitting on the couch listening to it while sipping Baileys, <laughs> like some grandmother at Christmas. <laughs> I still think about my lazy eye as a kid when I was eight years old which I don't know if you know the treatment for a lazy eye, it's a patch. That's what they do, they put a patch over the other non-lazy eye to make the lazy one 
not lazy. <laughs> that's it, that's the best that science has come up with in the 21st century. Like, I know there's scientists, there's probably some doctors, some, maybe some eye doctors in the room right now. That's all they've got. It's like something a Victorian nanny would have invented. <laughs> like, don't help the lazy eye. <laughs> Treat it mean. Like, it's like a... And your parents try and play it off like a good thing. That's what happens. They're like, oh, look at you, you lucky thing. You get to have an eye patch. That's cool, isn't it? No one else has an eye patch. You're the only one. You're literally the only one in your school. It's always good to look different as a kid. It's always good to have the thing stuck on your face that no one else has. Kids like the child that stands out. You're gonna double down on it from the eye, that thing, that's a... Uh... I've asked around as well, by the way, I've asked what various parents had. Some parents gave their kids the actual full pirate eye patch. Most, including mine, gave them a thing that looks like a leftover band-aid just stuck to the front of your face. Some parents thought they were helping their children by disguising the eye patch, by covering it with a sticker of an eye. <laughs> As if that's not terrifying. Like, <laughs> off you go with your single unblinking eye, go on. With your one eye that moves around and the other one that looks like it can see through time. Act normal, make friends, go. <laughs> what, what I'm saying is I, I envy, I envy you Americans who can make Moments count and then forget about it seconds later. <laughs> I can't, I dwell. I'll be dwelling on this. Thank you, cheers, bye. <laughs>